1965, the U.S. Army is fighting in Vietnam. A new helicopter, the Lockheed Cheyenne, promises to change the battlefield. But behind the futuristic design lay a very ordinary problem, spare parts. Thousands of components, all needing to be tracked, replaced, and ordered. The Army needed a powerful new data system, something no one had ever built before. They turned to TRW, a defense contractor in California, famous for developing America's first ICBM. The Army had two unusual requests. First, the system had to speak English, so non-programmers could use it. And second, it had to run on hardware not yet determined. The project's first programmer was Don Nelson, quiet, methodical, and careful. Nelson was soon joined by an outgoing Berkeley MBA graduate named Richard Pick. The two produced a database software they cheekily called Girls, Generalized Information Retrieval Language System. The Army, however, had no sense of humor. They renamed it Generalized Information Management, Jim. As documented in a 1967 technical paper, Jim 1 felt ahead of its time. Its key feature was an English-like prose query language. Queries went through dictionaries, letting experts customize vocabulary. Users could write queries like, list the title author and abstract. The dictionaries made Jim very flexible. New items could be added without breaking existing data. It reminds me of today's NoSQL databases. To meet hardware independence, GIM ran in a virtual environment, a virtual machine. TRW delivered the software in 1969, but the larger Cheyenne project was cancelled. TRW failed to protect the software, leaving it in public domain. Pick believed this released Jim into the public domain. He left TRW to start Pick and Associates. After bouncing around, Pick licensed his code to Microdata in Irvine, California. Microdata used it for their reality minicomputers. Its strong file management system was praised as English. Users loved it, one said, the biggest advantage is English, you can't beat it. By 1976, PIC left Microdata after conflict over control. PIC wanted exclusive control of the OS and planned to port it to other hardware. Conflict boiled over when PIC was accused of taking software out of the building. Microdata sued PIC for stealing trade secrets. PIC counter sued. The two sides settled out of court in 1981, agreeing to shared custody. PIC first tried selling his own hardware system, the Evolution. But selling hardware proved too difficult, so he sold Evolution off in 1980. PIC decided instead to focus on licensing his OS to hardware makers. Meanwhile, Microdata wasted money on new OS projects and sold itself to McDonnell Douglas in 1979. PIC OS's core function was its database management software. It organized data in layers, like Dante's Circles of Hell. The OS supported multiple user logins. At the top level were master dictionaries defining verbs and commands. Data dictionaries pointed to PIC files themselves. PIC files stored items, attributes, values, and subvalues. The database was highly flexible, maybe too flexible. For example, PIC supported multi-value fields. Unlike SQL, PIC stored everything as ASCII text strings. All dates were stored as days since December 31, 1967. Even President Reagan's Star Wars missile defense? Just data management, he joked. This focus made PIC OS popular with business and commercial users. It contrasted sharply with Bell Labs Unix, beloved by developers. PIC fans were fewer, but just as fervent. One writer said they spoke of discovering PIC OS like born-again Christians. One vendor said, if the phone company owned PIC, there'd be no Unix. So if PIC OS was so great, why isn't it bigger today? Both Unix and PIC faced a problem, a chaotic ecosystem of distributors. PIC's licensees created niche vertical apps, from funeral homes to car dealerships. 
they rebranded it with names like Mentor, Zebra, and Revelation. Fragmentation grew as each licensee modified PIC OS differently. The rise of the IBM PC should have killed PIC OS. But business owners wanted multi-user environments. MS-DOS was single-user. PIC enabled timesharing. Dennis Gallagher demonstrated three users on a single PC. It astonished people. How could one small computer do so much? Later CPUs allowed up to 16 people to share one PC. This fueled growth of PIC installations by 40% a year between 1982 and 1986. By 1988, there were 130,000 installations on mainframes and 80,000 on PCs. Licensees wanted the Intel port, but PIC systems kept it for themselves. This put PIC systems in competition with their own customers. The conflict soured to the point of legal action. In 1985, Vmark announced a Unix PIC bridge with AT&T. But PIC systems sued, claiming copyright and trade secret theft. At the center of it all was Richard Pick, brilliant, but stubborn. Former employees recalled that he dismissed PCs as toys, he never partnered with IBM, avoiding alliances that could have saved them. He never wanted to be Bill Gates. He was content once the company could pay its bills. Employees said nobody dared challenge him. Marketing went through many failed VPs, including Adam Osborne, who lasted only a weekend. In 1994, tragedy struck. Richard Pick suffered a stroke and died at just 56. Without a proper will, Pick systems fell into chaos after Richard's death. The company never regained its former direction. In 2000, Pick systems merged with Omnis Technology. They rebranded as Reigning Data Corp. In 2008, they renamed themselves Tiger Logic. In 2013, Rocket Software acquired the PIC OS assets. Rocket was known for collecting legacy software. PIC OS survived, though faded from mainstream view. Many companies eventually replaced it with NoSQL systems. Yet some firms still quietly run PIC today. To its fans, it was a system with no walls. PIC OS was both database and operating system, unique for its time. It empowered ordinary users with English-like queries. And it gave developers PIC Basic, deeply integrated with data. Above all, it reflected the vision of one man, Richard Pick. Stubbornness made him both a visionary and a tragic figure. He never wanted to be Gates or Jobs. Instead, he built a system loved by a dedicated few. A legacy that survives in small corners of the computing world. PIC OS proved that innovation doesn't always win the market. But it left an undeniable mark on computing history. PIC OS remains a story of vision, stubbornness, and legacy.